I'm Melissa Khan with our Wednesday, August 19th edition of News in Depth. We begin tonight's newscast by telling you that a 43-year-old woman is Guyana's 26 COVID-19 related death. Guyana's COVID-19 death toll continues to rise and today the Ministry of Health announced the 26th death. Now this comes mere hours after the country recorded three COVID-19 related deaths on Wednesday, while the confirmed positive cases moved up to 737. As of Tuesday, the 18th of August 2020, a release from the Ministry of Health said the 43-year-old woman died at the Georgetown Public Hospital today. The ministry said the woman was a patient of the transitional ward at the GPHC upon admission to the GPHC. A swab test was done on her and following her death, the results came back as positive. The Ministry of Health said they are in contact with all relatives and other contacts to facilitate contact tracing and rapid assistance to everyone who may have been exposed. The ministry is asking that the patient confidentiality be respected and that the families are allowed to mourn in peace. On Wednesday, two males ages 9 to 3 and 8 to 7 died at the Georgian Public Hospital, while a 32-year-old man died at the Bartico Hospital. Members of the public are encouraged to observe the COVID-19 emergency measures, number 8 published in the official gazette, on the 14th of August 2020, which emphasizes the need to practice physical distancing of being at least six feet apart, use a mask correctly and constantly when leaving their homes, and to practice good hand washing hygiene to reduce the spread of COVID-19. More news after this break. The all-in-one weapon for perfecting imperfections and capturing flawless skin. A lot of brands forget women of color or just don't understand that we come in all shades. From caramel to ebony, there is such a range. Iman Cosmetics is for every woman and features a line of skincare products and cosmetics including 16 foundation shades, powder, concealer, lipstick, blush, eyeshadow, highlighter and BB cream. Visit us at Lot 75 Swamp Section, Rosal Town. That's behind the market. Or call 337-4422 or 688-9249. Millions of dollars went up in flames as the fire of unknown origin gutted two business places and a residence at the Cinco Limited on Sheriff Street. The fire started after one this afternoon and quickly got out of control. Containing the fire was no easy task for members of the Guyana Fire Service, who for several minutes struggled to source water to put out the fire. This did not sit well with residents of the area who lashed out at the Guyana Fire Service. And all I see is fire and no help whatsoever. And without water, there's no help. Without water, no help. They have all the fire reels, they have all the fire attendants, they have all the workers, but no water. Only sun could stop this. Only sunlight could stop the fire. This tremendous embarrassment from the administration, from the fire service. It is what you call embarrassment from the fire service that we are paying. Taxpayers' money is we are not getting no water, and they say they spend millions and billions of dollars to get all the hydrant working. So I surprised that they're going to a trench down there that flat up to say they're going to bring water here. No water. The Guyana Fire Service had its full complement of fire tenders on the scene, but the wind made the situation difficult. Associate Packers another business office and an apartment were all located in the gutted building. Frank Diabro, owner of the business, along with his staff, watched helplessly as his years of investments went up in flames. He said it was a sad situation, but he plans to pick up the pieces. But I'm sad. I'm very sad, but um, nobody died. So you got to accept that not everybody alive. So I pick up pieces. What was going to happen? I know not there. Nobody tell me But what I know, I'll rise again. There ain't no power to keep me down. I will rise again. We ensure 
and our neighbors help us and everybody help us. So um, we're grateful. Diablo said the building is insured and he could not give an estimate of his losses at this time. Oh no, sir, I know. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't tell you how much it is. And you've got a, a series of workers here? Yeah, we have a series. No, well, actually, um, no, there's two businesses occupy over there. It's um, a residence and associate packers. They have a number of workers. The decor look like it's safe. It looked like, with God's help, we should overcome. And those are the workers. The police arrived in their numbers and cordoned off the area to ensure the firemen had all the comfort they needed to execute their duties. The firemen eventually got the fire under control, but by this time, most of the damage had already been done. The firemen were able to save the decor, which is located at the same location. An investigation is currently underway by the Guyana Fire Service to ascertain the origin of the fire. Shh! It's your new secret. The all-in-one weapon for perfecting imperfections and capturing flawless skin. A lot of brands forget women of color or just don't understand that we come in all shades. From caramel to ebony, there is such a range. Iman Cosmetics is for every woman and features a line of skincare products and cosmetics including 16 foundation shades, powder, concealer, lipstick, blush, eyeshadow, highlighter and BB cream. Visit us at Lot 75 Swamp Section, Rosal Town. That's behind the market. Or call 337-4422 or 688-9249. That is 40-year-old Andrea Donis, called Sean Peters. He was on remand for simple larceny. The murder was reportedly committed by four inmates from the said prison. According to a police report, initial investigations revealed that the deceased was in Bay 2, while the suspects were in Bay 1. On Tuesday, August 17th, around 22 hours 30, the victim jumped the fence, which separates Bay 1 from Bay 2. During a heated argument between himself and the four suspects, a fight ensued between them, which resulted in the victim receiving several chops about his head, chest, hands, and both feet. The victim was then taken to the medical outpost at the Lusignan prison, where he was medically examined by a prison medic on duty and subsequently escorted to the Georgetown Public Hospital, where he was further examined by a doctor and admitted a patient in a critical condition. The man succumbed to his injuries around 10.30 on Tuesday morning. According to a release from the director of prisons, Gladwin Samuels, the four men involved in the incident have been positively identified after a review of the CCTV footage. Additionally, a partial search of the prison by prison officers unearthed the improvised weapons used in the stabbing and chopping. Additionally, 111 improvised weapons and 9 cell phones were found during the search. Samuels, in his release, has said that the items recovered were for the sole purpose of threatening officers and fellow prisoners. The police investigations into the murder are ongoing. And that has brought us to the end of our news for tonight. For these and other stories, visit our website at rdproductiongy.com or our Facebook and Instagram page at Royston and Tricks Production. On behalf of our news team, thank you for joining us and join us again tomorrow for more news.